ఆల్రెడీ ఇచ్చేస్తాం ఆల్రెడీ ఎఫ్డిపి త్రీ అని ఉంటుంది సెర్చ్ ఫర్ ఎఫ్డిపి త్రీ అన్న Good morning faculty, welcome to the third day. Hope you have been uh, having an engaging uh, session. Uh, both the sessions, first day and second day, you have been having this engaging session. And I wanted to tell you, please do not post additional uh, information in these groups because uh, the people or faculty who are very keen in learning will lose the information that they have to actually learn. So please restrict the groups only to only about this FDB program. Looks like uh, faculty are uh, you know, more enthusiastic or uncontrollable than the students. So please uh, keep
keep the decorum of that whatsapp group please keep the decorum of the whatsapp group and don't post any additional things and second thing is no issues about attendance at all so i have been getting personal requests from a uh, lot of faculty who said i was not able to attend for one hour so small small things please don't worry about it at all at the end of the day the certificate is easy to get than the knowledge so please concentrate on the knowledge and and the learning don't at all think about uh, too much about the certificate so most of the faculty who will be attending this program certificate and uh, the finally uh, so i have got the uh, feedback from yesterday 80% of the faculty have five rating and 20% have given uh, four rating so the number of ratings i got less than a three is very few maybe two three of of 1500 some two three people apart from that everybody has given four five rating but people who have given four rating please let us know what extra or additional we have to do to make it better or go everybody ha get 100% five rating is our main aim so please let us know what are the uh, what is that lacking in this program so uh, coming back to this session so uh, yesterday we were uh, we closed it some 15 minutes before hand because of a technical glitch Uh, today we won't have those technical glitches we have fixed all those things and um, we will be starting off from where we have left so you won't uh, lose much of the thing. so the happy learning to you all uh, i will hand it over to molly sir molly sir will take from here and before uh, i leave i'll have to tell again uh, thank you to srujan sir uh, from cmr technical campus thank you to chairman sir and thank you to director mr raj reddy garu so they are the reason to make this huge and uh, we are uh, looking more and more so usually the faculty will drop after uh, class after class but is more faculty are adding day over day so thank you very much you are all uh, reason for making this big success and i will hand it over to molly happy learning to all of you it's wonderful to see uh, many of the faculty join the call i will take a moment to set up things and then probably we will then again go live so uh, it just a an introduction to what we are going to talk today or what where we are going to spend our time one we will look at the linear regression problem in a holistic manner wherein we will see what are the medical charges medical insurance likely to be that prediction we will also look at uh, house price uh, predicting a house price in a particular location and uh, given a size so for that we will use linear regression model uh, we will use those three equations that we spoke about to get the uh, prediction then we will also spend briefly logistic regression 
the next two days tomorrow day after we are going to spend time on image uh, recognition part which means the machine will be able to look at the image and classify what the image is so further we will use uh, two different models one is support vector machines second one is uh, image convolutional neural network so this is going to be a a really uh, complex uh, aspect however in the deep learning uh, we will try and get some sort of an introduction into how the equations are formulated in deep learning because of which the model is generated or developed and it is able to predict and classify the images even the image classification will be interesting uh, hands on session uh, somebody is asking question so we will spend more time today for uh, questions to after the break 10 minutes to 15 minutes uh, we will today spend uh, time linear regression logistic regression and python i am not sure you will get that much time in parallel to work on it however what we can do since this is we have large group of uh, faculty members and some of them may not even practice may not really go into programming however i will show you the rest of the code in the python in terms of how do we create lists how do we create dictionaries so these are uh, primary methods uh, to form a data frame or the table that we spoke about then we will also look at two key libraries that is numpy and um, pandas all right well, let's uh, get into the uh, main session and i uh, quick recap of what we discussed uh, yesterday so we were looking at how do we predict insurance charges uh, uh, of a company in us uh, so we had this data that we saw where uh, we took uh, first few lines uh, six records from the data and said these are the input variables like x1 x2 from employ the citizen id age gender body mass index children smoker or not and region these are the input variables x1 to uh, x7 and then what we are attempting to predict uh, is charges so for us to predict we have to uh, learn about the the connection between relation between the charges and the input variables that's where we are talking this is data of us so we said there are these four regions we had now we wanted to understand uh, since uh, some of this data is uh, in different format we needed to process the data get the entire data into uh, numeric format so we we learned about label encoder which was there in scientific kit learn uh, sk learn we call in the pre processing there is this function called label encoder that converts your ordinal values categorical values into uh, numerical uh, values and finally zeros and ones through the encoder we discussed that we also spoke uh, briefly about how do we treat missing values when you have missing value one way is if the numbers are very small just remove the record uh, or one person's details or you can have a mean of the data or median of the data depending on the type of the information or the frequency model uh, data you can keep over there to the missing value we also discussed you can write just as unknown which is another class altogether in the in a categorical column then once you pre process and prepare the entire data i will also go to our code study we looked at i am using the terminal method and in the terminal since i have created a separate uh, yeah this may not be Uh, visible for you and hopefully this should be good i'm um, since i created uh, a separate environment i'm first going to that environment however this is not important for you and having uh, the environment uh, advantage is that any libraries that i download will stay within the environment it will not go and clog my entire machine and tomorrow if i don't want to work on python don't want to work on machine learning models i can just delete this particular folder once i am here uh, i told you about using jupyter notebook or a code editor or a regular notebook the jupyter notebook is web interface driven so all i have to type is type jupyter notebook and click well uh, the interface for jupyter notebook is a web browser uh, i use the safari probably uh, i'm guessing many of you might use windows and therefore chrome may be your web browser you will see the local host is 8888 sometimes it is 9000 by but default is uh, uh, 8888 so once you have there your folders list this is your root uh, folder you will have all of this data i have it in desktop 
within the desktop faculty development program and created. Let me go and access the file. We are uh, looking at uh, insurance charges, so medical insurance. I will uh, have this uh, document. Uh, so, so in the here, what we have also looked at yesterday was uh, you need to download some, import some libraries for your machine to work. This is the interface. So NumPy is a library where all the computations, uh, all the numerical uh, driven computations are available. Pandas biggest thing that we can use this for is the tables. You can read files, write files, manipulate those files uh, in terms of table format where you have a clear structure. So pandas, uh, import OS, it is not uh, essential if you are working on uh, complex things. Matplot library, we have not spent much time yesterday. Matplot library it has so many different plots. You have a bar chart, you have pie chart, you have bubble chart, all of this uh, to understand the data, what are different input variables. Here we are talking about different input variables. Uh, whether age and gender or age and BMI, is there any correlation here? Uh, there are certain terms called homoscelasticity and so on. I think what is important for us uh, and, and collinearity in this case between age and BMI, uh, if they are highly correlated, then they, these two variables itself influence on the charges, making sure uh, there is no such uh, high influence from a set of variables. You can use these uh, matplot uh, library where you can, using visual uh, graphs, you can look at the patterns and uh, prepare the data appropriately. C1 is another one. So import, uh, I spoke about where if there are any warnings because of which your file is getting terminated, you can say warnings can be ignored. Warning is more like uh, have you make sure that uh, so and so issue is addressed proper, proper properly or something is the, uh, yeah, so there are certain things that are being removed and so on. All right. Now, uh, this is how we called the data. So uh, I've opened the file from uh, the other place. Uh, colleagues, uh, they have done some bit of work to make this more specific for you. And I think that's how I opened a new one. However, let me go back to the actual file. This is insurance charge and I have the, uh, the actual CSV here. Mm. Let me copy it and go back and paste here. The reason I need to have uh, always the the file along with the Python uh, file, the data set along with the Python file is so that I can easily call just with the name of the file. So I can call the CSV file. So we have here pandas is uh, called as PD, um, pandas as PD. So we have a sort of a, a name is assigned to it and so therefore we can call this library. In that we have read underscore CSV comma separated values, read that file and uh, R, of course, you can use or you can remove. There is a specific advantage with that. Now I will run this file. You will notice that uh, so asterisk mark is formed. And now it turns in turned into one. When there is an asterisk mark, which means it is uh, being executed. So if it moves out successfully, that means that now in this environment, on this file, you have these libraries running in the back end. So you can take the support of it. Now let us read this file very quickly. I will go because we did spend time on these areas. File is being read. Now head is a, a method by which uh, uh, we can get to see the top five values of the data. So on the left hand side, what you see are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, is the index that's been created. So if you want to identify a particular individual's data record, so you have indexing that is possible. So you have um, uh, lists and dictionaries, they have index uh, available. Sets, on the other hand, they don't have index. So there is uh, uh, no way you can refer to the data set and it'll, it'll, it will not allow duplicate values too. We will look at those data structures somewhere along the line today in today's session. Now, investigating data set uh, that we'll talk about info method will give you what type of data it is. So I will run that, you have clearly there are some objects, integers and floats. Though we didn't define automatically, it took them as integers and floats, while there are some which are objects. We need to convert them. 
describe is not a important thing for us. Null values. Are there any null values? And then we see there are some null values. So we have to treat these, no, these null values. And where those null values are present is this graph. However, I would say for us it is not required. I will just delete that uh, um, so that it doesn't take too much space. So we have, uh, we are also looking at what is the percentage of the null values and it is a very small, minuscule percentage. If it is such a small percentage, you can just even drop it, which is what uh, we have done here. I am executing this. Uh, here we dropped. Now after you drop, the null values have been very, very less. Uh, now uh, we also realize that column, for example, here does not add much value. It can't add much value uh, to the charges. So you don't have a pattern. The patient ID is all very unique uh, numbers. Uh, yesterday we discussed when you have a input variable with all or most of them being unique, as well as when you have an input variable with uh, all or most of them same then you can't differentiate the uh, output value. So then there is no classification, there is no segregation uh, of patterns that you can generate. So therefore, you, you drop those uh, columns. In this case, we are dropping the patient ID. Uh, this is what we have done. Now, important aspect that we spoke about, uh, which is why we came to the code, is uh, the uh, categorical columns are converted to numerical form. So you have uh, label encoder is a method in SQL learn uh, package uh, pre-processing. There are uh, multiple libraries. You have downloaded this library, downloaded the library. The way uh, it does is uh, it can convert, it does the auto encoding. So and also it will uh, drop the first column in the auto encoding so that you will have lesser number of columns. So everything gets converted into ones and zeros. So depending on, let us say here in gender, you have male and female. So it will convert uh, in the label encoding one and zero. Female is one, male is zero. Now, on the other hand, smoker is also one and zero region. There are four regions that are there. So it will initially give one, two, three, four, and then one will have one zero 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 and uh, the second one will have zero one zero zero and third one is zero zero one zero and I'm hoping that I am making sense let me say what I mean by those if you have four values so uh, essentially what we get is the the four different uh, values unique values in the region so I will keep one zero 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 if you look at uh, auto encoding then zero one Zero, 0 and so on then we will say 0 0 1 0 uh, and uh, fourth one zero 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 and 1 now one variable has turned into four variables now so variable 1 variable 2 variable 3 and variable 4 uh, or variable or attribute you call it as attribute so because some of the attributes may not vary so strictly speaking in machine learning or in mathematics, we call these as attributes. So four attributes that we have, and now you can see that you, you are bringing that uniqueness in all these four, and you also converted into machine understandable language, which is what we are aiming from this. And then it will, from here, uh, we, have, we have exactly done the same. We transformed the gender, we transformed the smoker, and we transformed region. All right, I'm running. Now, uh, we can check uh, uh, charges and the correlation with the charges. Is there any high correlation? Of course, for the charges, you will see correlation because you are comparing charges with charges. So this is only for reference check, I would say. Uh, the plot, uh, this will give you a lot of information about, uh, uh, let's say, the correlation heat map, where, are, where all each variable is correlated to the other variable. So what here obviously when age is compared to age, you will have 100% correlated. That's why this you have one. Similarly, gender is compared to gender, so you will have 100% correlated. However, when age is compared to gender, the age is compared to gender, age is compared to BMI, so you have different values. This is a good practice in machine learning so that you don't have bias of uh, one or two variables. Um, if you have not joined yesterday, the pace will be very, very different. The reason is we are only doing a recap right now. 
Now I will execute this uh, using uh, the heat map is done. And now I'm going to building a regression model. So for the model, uh, we spoke about yesterday here, a couple of things before we go to the model. Yeah, so we looked at the what is x, what is y, x values we have seen, and then we said the data pre-processing we discussed. Uh, then once you process the data, you have to do encoding, which is what here we spoke about and encoding we discussed yesterday. Now, missing values, we removed missing values, transformed the data set up here, everything is in the numerical formats. Now, this is where we have to get on to our next step, which is, uh, of course, yesterday we discussed a uh, uh, few things, uh, but I will try and bring summary of uh, our key aspects because I always uh, kept saying there are three primary equations that will bring. The first one is pattern recognition. Since the output for us here is, uh, thank you. Uh, output is a, a continuous value, the, the charges are uh, amount. So amount is a continuous value. So therefore, uh, and you have the value available, it comes under supervised learning. And in supervised learning, there are supervised learning and regression models. There are many regression models and we are using linear regression. So we are familiar with the linear regression. In linear regression, the relationship between x values, input values and uh, y values, uh, we are aware y is equal to f of x normally we call. And this uh, processing, we are aware that is mx plus c. I may do it little fast. I am still to get a right uh, mechanism to do this. All right. Now with this, uh, x, however, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 values. So we have uh, 6 uh, values of x so that, so you have therefore 6 uh, values of slope, m1, x1, uh, plus so on and so forth, and you have till m6, uh, x6, uh, plus constant. So in case uh, you miss the day 1 class, uh, what is the, how do you have this y is equal to mx plus c and what is c? We discussed that generally in a linear uh, equation, y is equal to mx could have been a perfect ideal one where you have some bit of number processing the x value to give y, but if the, the straight fit line that you are drawing between age of a person and weight, you do not have the line starting from the origin. Instead, it starts from somewhere on the y line so therefore something like this, so let's say, if it is the line is like this, then this intercept value is the constant or bias. This is what uh, we call it as constant or bias value. This is the pattern recognition one. We spoke about one, you do, once you do the pattern recognition, second step that you do is, um, I will now make a prediction. First, I have to learn about what should be my M value and C value. To know what is what should be your M and C, your first step that you do is in this case you have uh, made some initializers. So you have initiated with M probably one and C is equal to one. This is uh, just an assumption. It is not uh, because you are going to go through so many iterations with this. With this M and C as one, you go and apply in the first record. First record, or uh, we call in uh, mathematical terms, it is called an object. In the first object, you will apply M as 1. Now, M here is M1, M2, uh, so it is uh, I is equal to 1 to N, and you have uh, yeah 1 to 6 here, 1 to 6 you have. Uh, so we will provide for all the M1 to M6, it is the value being 1, because this is an initial assumption. Once you make and apply it in this, we've got answer as 50.9 m1 into x1, m2 into x3, x2, m3 into x3 and so on. So y hat we got, the predicted value that you have got here, y hat is 50.9, uh, 50 .9, while what we have observed in reality, you have the number, right? This is part of the training, by the way. You are training the model. In reality, it is 16,884. So therefore, you have a difference of 16,834. Uh, this 16,834, how do you now? Uh, oh, this is the error. The error value is uh, 16,834. Now, since it is one record, you have used a simple mechanism of y minus y hat as the error. However, in reality, in this case, you have 
so many records right to so now essentially what is the insurance charge for that you have to train your machine on the pattern recognition part now for the pattern we are uh, doing this uh, particular exercise so error could have been y minus y hat however since you have many hundreds of records you are saying sigma of that error i is equal to 1 to n and then you said uh, you will keep like this i is equal to 1 to n and then you keep it. now what happens is in this if whenever you have y positive and negative the value overall plus plus it becomes zero so the error can appear the overall sum of errors can appear as uh, um, zero so you will not learn anything therefore what we do is you do a modulus or you do a square here and then you will start getting so this is a uh, sum of square of errors we call uh, while this is a common thing what i prefer to do is i do a mean square error where i divide it by uh, the error by or uh, the total number of values or degrees of freedom if it is a sample value i do i divide by y n so mean square error now you computed and the error has come to in the first case uh, let us say you have done uh, uh, overall and the error let us say 420 now you have to rectify this error this is where we are using the third uh, equation how do i bring this error to almost close to zero this is our goal close to zero i have to bring it so how do i bring it so we spoke about a gradient descent model it is like you have 420 and it has to come slowly down somehow and this uh, yeah one way to explain this is uh, let's say that you have error like this uh, uh, something like this for now and here you have 420 somewhere here now how do you reduce this error we know that you can have one step down and then you will come here so therefore the error is less so somehow you have to reach this point where the error is very less now for uh, normally for a for a line the slope that you can identify is y1 by x2 minus x1 is the slope that is m value uh, however the problem that we are facing is our error is not a straight line it is curved line so what you will do it so the uh, faculty in mathematics i'm sure they can already understand uh, how exactly we do we use a derivative here now you will identify the derivative uh, say for uh, the error derivative whatever is the error that we are getting uh, divided by uh, we will compute the slope uh, first you get the slope value m yeah. Uh, you will get uh, some value where which is uh, so you can compute that uh, later then you will also take the derivative of uh, uh, constant or the bias value you will get uh, some value now once you have both of this what you will do is the new m is equal to old m which was uh, one old m minus the learning rate i will talk about learning rate learning rate is how much of uh, step down that you want to keep learning rate is how much is the stepping down i will say the stepping down has to be very very small we'll explain in a moment why it should be very small uh, learning rate into the derivative of this value so the error uh, derivative of m so Uh, you are familiar with uh, some of you may be familiar with the derivative function because in this you will do a very minute change into the value let's say that y2 value here is uh, a step difference let's say upwards is uh, y1 plus uh, a small value of uh, um, yeah y2 you cannot get let's say y2 is nothing but f of uh, uh, f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1 uh, so i my hand is slow i am not able to probably write everything however i will speak at a high level what it is f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1 however your uh, movement has to be very small and uh, make it to i'm assuming we are making it tangential so that it, the movement is very small this x2 is nothing but x1 plus uh, delta x i'll call delta x as h uh, 
this is what I learned from one of the mathematicians in my school also I've learned like this uh, x1 plus h uh, so this is also x1 plus h so therefore your denominator is essentially x1 and x1 gets striped off and you have denominator as h and in the top you have f of x1 plus h minus uh, f of x1 and do it further steps and so on you will get a value that value you will multiply with the learning rate and reduce the current m with that learning rate so you get a new m now you go back and use this new m in the new uh, in the numbers so you repeat these three steps till uh, the number of times uh, uh, the number of times we decide we can say that iterations that you use number of iterations to be used are 500 we will use 500 iterations and in 500 iterations by the way this model of row descendant typically this is not just a one way curve it can even it will be like a bowl shape like a olden days hyderabad shape we say right uh, we had we were more like a bowl and then we had water uh, around the hyderabad now uh, that it no longer had the same shape which was there 300 years ago for which those sultans to move their capital city from uh, to hyderabad here yeah. in any case in the bowl you can have learning rate uh, coming down and then even going up so this is called gradient descent model uh, and the model with which we can do in the computer is in the model that we use in our algorithm is stochastic gradient which means it does this work for each person's data every person's data it computes looks at the error goes back and checks and then creates this error and so on so yeah so stochastic gradient descent is the model that we have so these three steps we can follow good part in python is it has library for this y is called mx plus c it has library for this error it has library even for this if you use stochastic gradient regressor we will see in a moment now sgd regressor uh, and then you have yeah it is uh, yeah it is a gd regressor correct and then you have this uh, function it will take care of all these three equations within it and give you answer strictly speaking if you are a programmer or wanting to get into programming you don't need to really know but uh, if you are somebody who wants to mathematically derive things this is how we can handle it now we will go back to the program one more thing see if you are training the machine to look at the patterns between these values and this charge you also need to test it right so it has to whether it is working accurately or not uh, so if you go by just accuracy of training then with the new new record that you get which is a very different now next time you see a 45 year person with uh, three children nowadays it is almost impossible to have three children uh, i don't know why with the two children we are also finding it extremely difficult to handle. Now, uh, let's say you have a record of 45 years old person with four children and does not smoke and it will not be able to predict accurately. So therefore, you take some elements, which is typically 20% of the data, you split it into a test data set, test data set. You don't, uh, and then you keep a random seed, we call it as a seed, you keep it and it will randomly pick 80% one side, 20% it keeps one side, keeps aside for you to test uh, whether your newly developed model, the model is nothing but you have finally after all the iterations, the M1 to M6, the values you will get final values. What is M1 uh, is equal to finally after all the iterations, what is M2 and what is uh, M6 still here m6 and what is constant so in mathematical terms or uh, statistics we call it as coefficients basically it gives you coefficients uh, in machine learning these are called parameters and uh, in deep learning we call it as weights how all mean same basically those coefficients we have to finally get the coefficients which reasonably helps you create some sort of a line like this I am assuming that uh, this is only a two dimensional one when you have, uh, I will create one more line so that uh, I am hoping uh, my notes is helping you uh, and you can give your comments uh, at 11 o'clock when you take break I can see whether my notes is helping or anything else I have to do. So if it is a two dimensional one, uh, you have age and weight then you can plot it in a 
two dimensional uh, interface like this. Uh, if you have a third dimension, it is not just age, you also have a, a person's uh, to determine weight, you also have a person's gender. Then you can't keep it here in the two dimensional space. We just for reference sake, in a two dimensional book, we will try and plot something down. In reality, you, the down is also in two dimensional. However, in a space in your room, you can see third dimension too. You can have the depth appearing in, in addition to the length and uh, uh, breadth. Length and breadth, you also have the depth. So when you have six different variables with the comparison for seven, you will keep elevating it to next level dimension. You can really have that segregation possible. That is how multi-dimensional line can be created. And still you will have a best fit line that somehow gets created. Normally it can appear something like this, but uh, it can segregate the data points. All right, now let us see how it works in the program. In programming, things are extremely simple. Uh, we have a train and a test. Uh, you have a train test split under SKLM, there is one library. Uh, so you call the library and do it. We will, I'll show you right away. And then you have, uh, uh, I show, told you about uh, stochastic gradient descent regressor. You have, it will take care of everything. Uh, what arguments it has is important for us. We will look at what are the arguments we can pass in it so that you can modify it if you take a readily available library, which is why Python is... Uh, extremely popular because so many such libraries are available which makes the programmer life extremely simple by the way nowadays the program doesn't even need to mathematics because all you got to know is we'll show you here uh, if you look at a model uh, model selection is uh, in sklearn package within that you have a train test split i will make it little more bigger uh, so that hopefully screen will appear. Now train test split you have imported and then you said uh, yeah uh, there is we will talk about mean square error. So if you want to explicitly see what is the error value that uh, we have got on the test data set not the training data set. Training data set anyways uh, the SGD regressor or linear regressor that takes care. Once you have that, uh, you have to remove uh, from the table charges. Charges is our target value. We are now calling charges uh, as y, the output value as y. And then create one more data set, which is y is equal to uh, data dot charges. Um, now data is where we have stored our CSV file. So in the CSV file, this column is charges. Uh, in X, uh, uh, the all the columns except the charges a axis is equal to 1 where where the position of it so it will get removed now x has uh, these value quickly show x has uh, age to region now y has oh sorry this is a different problem not a problem i'll show you a x has age to region and y has the charges that's how we have kept in this algorithm in the program. Now what we did, we are creating some new uh, values, x train, x test, y train, y test, and then uh, what should go into them is train test split. This is what the uh, method that we have uh, brought in. In that you create x and y, you take the values of x and y and create random state is called some zero. So you can do your randomly you pick up any some values and keep and uh, zero we have uh, we have giving one seed so that whatever split that you made you remember that so if i am doing it multiple times i am going to deal with exactly same set of values for training purpose now once we do that we are calling uh, a linear model called linear regression here a uh, linear regression uh, runs on a ordinary least square method. It does not follow such a complex uh, gradient descent format. Uh, it will do the first one and second second one. So if you are, if you remember ordinary least square method in um, linear regression where you have uh, y is equal to mx plus c and the way we get the um, 
we get the derivative of uh, m and c values and finally so using the derivatives uh, through the ordinary uh, least square method i will show the formulas for you because for me to write down is getting difficult i will show from one of the documents in my ppts and finally with the by using the derivatives of uh, um, m and so we need to use the mean square error from there we can uh, draw so this is the error that when we want to reduce the mean square error to near zero what happens in the mean square error formula is sigma i is equal to 1 to n and uh, you have y minus what values you predict is y hat uh, let's say using this formula you have used y hat and whole square i told you why we should use whole square and divided by the degrees of freedom because this is a sample that we are dealing with when this has to be near zero then what we are essentially talking about is this y hat is nothing but mx plus c so i you convert this into a formula like this y minus this whole square and divided by n and so on so now you if you bring these values to uh, near zero then overall uh, number can become error can go to very low value or error by m and equate this value whatever comes to is 0 and by c you also make it to 0 i will show these things because it is taking a lot of efforts for me to write uh, everything all right so when you bring this 0 finally you what values you can get is from this derivative you get a m value and c value since you are able to get m value and c value where the MSE is going to get zero, so you are essentially getting some sort of a best fit line. That is what the linear regression is uh, function uses in the sklearn.linear model. I will also show you stochastic gradient descent regressor, uh, probably in another code. In this, once you import the uh, file, then you are assigning that to LR. Now you are fitting the data into fitting the train. Uh, training data set both your input values under x train have input values y train has output value that is charges the insurance charges you are fitting that what it means uh, is you are trying to transform all these values under common standard uh, uh, normal distribution so you try and bring all the values to comparable values then only you can do it so you keep one um, um, a common uh, uniform mean value you get a uniform mean value and try and work on it so that they are all comparable otherwise what happens is age and bmi numbers are so high they will influence gender smoker region and they whatever is they will get reflected in the charges to avoid that we fit the data we transform and fit the data fit is a function which is extremely popular one so fit and now your data is ready for pattern recognition with charges you don't do uh, so you have fit the data so you are trying to check the pattern once that is done you are predicting y train is you are now training this model using this line y train underscore predict is the new one where you are trying to predict x train values relationship with y train this x train values relationship with y train once you do that next step is whatever you get some m value and c value after this line you get uh, the revised m value and c value uh, which is this m i spoke about right? i will try and keep a new color so that this is the revised m value after doing it multiple iterations 500 iterations here in the in this case uh, here it is straightforward you compute uh, using ordinary least squares uh, uh, method the derivative method and then you get uh, m and c use those m and c values now you have this you test it in the remaining data set you test them and check uh, yeah, you can do r square or you can again check the mean square error to see what is the error that you are uh, adjusted r square you can do you can do mean square error so I will just run this file. I got an error that says uh, name train test split is not defined. 
I didn't define the train test bit. Oh, maybe I have not uh, executed a, a row which had imported this particular function. That could have been the problem. Where is it? This one. So if I run this, okay, it's been executed. Now we run it. Hey, we got an answer. Or, so you know the R square has to be between 0 and 1 um, and therefore this is a 0.74 which is aggressive and that I have in the housing loan not housing loan it is house price prediction Boston is a city in um, uh, in US uh, it is in the eastern part of US IT and Harvard is uh, um, so I had, uh, in fact, uh, yeah, I have great memories of uh, meeting uh, the edX, the MI there. Uh, it's a uh, wonderful meeting him, Ananta Agarwal, Professor Ananta Agarwal. He got a Padma Shri award too. Uh, he, he received as extremely well and was so, so... You can always find whichever course you like, go and press audit there, audit. So, so that you can freely access that pro complete lecture without any cost. Search for it and then you will get to learn completely. Coming back to the, yeah, so the Boston uh, Python file, I'm here with the file data. I will quickly show you what uh, the house prediction has. This was there inbuilt into the scientific kit uh, as part of it. They cleaned the, the file and provided the data set. Uh, at a high level, I will show you, will not go into the details of the data set. This data set with you all. If, uh, if you have questions when you are executing, we are going to give you this code. If you have questions, probably you have to sh uh, share with them. I do not want to do the uh, code along here uh, so that some of you may not be interested in the code and for you it will not be a value for the time. Be time. So you have different, different parameters here. Uh, and uh, you are trying to predict the the uh, the house price. Uh, these are okay. There are different values are here. We have to understand which is the price. In any case, we can go ahead run this file because we want to look at a regressor whether it is working or not. This is the Python uh, sklearn function where under linear model you have a stochastic gradient descent regressor. So star uh, asterisk mark became one which means it's executed i called the file and i'm looking at uh, different different uh, data points of uh, that location and so on now all are which means it is pre-processed and readily available to do work on it now i have this uh, i'm moving to the new file and the data target is uh, y I am using now SGD regressor. I can keep max iteration is n iteration. So I have kept it as uh, n iterations thousand. Um, in fact, the default value argument always, if, even if you keep it blank, it still runs for you. Um, reason is uh, you can keep, let's say, 2000 here, but we are not using. I'm going for a default uh, value and uh, fit uh, x train, y train. Uh, we spoke about it and the predict uh, so pattern recognition using this row once you recognize the pattern you have to test it on the uh, new model plot plot oh, this is this is the this is the pattern recognition and it, here you, you are already testing it here here you are testing this is on the test data set so you have segregated when I press this you have mean square error y test and y predicted value uh, yeah, it is showing over different different uh, uh, how the data is distributed. Finally, the mean square error is 20. 20 is good enough for me to go ahead because my data set is extremely small. Now, I'm now going to the next one now for what are these that we have to pass and uh, what are the default arguments. I will straight away jump into the uh, stochastic gradient descent regressor and then we will probably show you a regressor uh, uh, arguments and uh, yeah so this is you can check uh, under uh, scikit learn you can look for stochastic gradient regressor yeah i'll make it bigger so that you can easily see font size is increased now or so uh, this is the scikit 
hyphen learn.org sklearn.linear model linear underscore model dot sgd regressor uh, here if you look at this particular class has i am using these terms class function method pretty much alternately i am not differentiating Can you please allow me because sometimes a method sometimes a class sometimes a function uh, there are some differences however uh, please uh, accept these pointers and proceed now this has so many different arguments there is a loss function loss function is nothing but our uh, cost function or objective of our uh, model objective a is to reduce the error so here you squared loss you can take penalty so i will look at important aspects so maximum iterations the number of times the stochastic gradient descent should go through all the input variables and then keep doing that entire turns again and again we also call these iterations as epochs epochs uh, is the you will uh, we will benefit from being familiar with this term epoch because tomorrow we will use this term in deep learning quite well. Deep learning is fascinating. It doesn't? Yeah, it's fascinating. Now, our post, then learning rate. This is extremely important. Uh, inverse scaling. Uh, a learning rate, this is what we spoke about here. At what pace it has to come down? Typical learning rate has to be like this you have like a u-shaped one it will never touch the bottom because error almost never will be zero so this is it so you can have the learning rate is from one position to another position that how much movement we should get that is the learning rate you have uh, validation and so on so to get understanding of each of these arguments you can go ahead and read here the the loss function to be used is squared loss. It is very simple. It will square up and use this. So uh, what it does is y minus y hat and square of it. That's it. So it is not see, it is not doing sum of square of errors because stochastic works with each line item. So it is just doing y minus y hat whole square. Go and check compute get the m and c values change the uh, change by a step here go one step down get new m and c values go record in the next record use it so that's how here it is using some of just squared loss uh, for obvious reasons now you have penalty not going to details because i would want to show you other aspects uh, so let me share whatever is important maximum iterations if your computer ha does processing you don't want to stretch it much so use it at uh, 100 uh, let's say I can keep my max iterations uh, don't need the in fact this uh, row I can even just go there and you saw the attribute name is max iteration is called 100 uh, is it max underscore iter I think so yeah it is uh, I can keep it at 100 and run it now it will give you a positive results very good result 20 or less than that because even though 100, because it already ran on 2000 or on 1000, right? That's how. But if I go back and start from the beginning, and you will see a difference. You will have higher error because number of rounds it is done is now how many? 22 is the error. Vis a vis, you keep here 2000 iterations. Now the error is likely to come down. Okay, it is still showing because there is not much learning beyond this. <laughs> yeah, give me a moment. So, beyond a point, whenever there is no learning rate, it should ideally stop. Yeah. Let's see. I will. I want to bring the uh, bring it down to uh, a different value, slightly lesser. Whatever we got first, I'm trying to get that uh, same value. Can I get the lesser? It is increased. Yeah. So, uh, depending on the random state that it is choosing, the the error can fluctuate there. So that is an important thing because train and test split. Uh, earlier it was it had used a good train test split, so it worked very well, and now it is a different one. And I'm hoping you understood uh, uh, why that mean square error is different. Now, we are, I also said uh, you have ordinary least square method, which is linear. 
regressor. I think it is called linear regression. Let's see. Not, uh, we will talk about somebody asked for on the day one what is bias. So that's a very important and useful thing to know. Psychic learn linear regression. Yeah, more linear uh, regression. It is a, there is no underscore here. That was the error. So linear regression. It has very few parameters here. I will straight away jump into the parameters. It takes care of all the requirements. Intercept uh, value. We better not keep anything. Uh, again, normalize also. You can use standard scalar. Just use fit. That is sufficient. Uh, before we run this model, we don't need to make any change in this L2 norms too. And uh, I would say these are perfectly fine. You can understand, but uh, there is no need to uh, use any of the values. Go with the default values that is adequate. Now that we ran linear regression model, you understood we are able to predict for uh, what can be the charges of it. Now, how well your model really functions? Can we check that? How well your model functioning uh, we should see? For that, uh, probably in this case, uh, we have used a mean square error. Uh, this is fine. In a, uh, we will also look into the model performance evaluation. So there are these concepts called C of the model, F1 score, uh, and so on. There is this confusion matrix. I will talk more about it. Before I go into it, after the break, we'll spend good amount of time to review your questions and answer. Then I will teach you logistic regression. What? We will take another example and say, oh, where is it? yesterday very briefly we touched upon answering a question. Uh, we will take one example like logistic regression where the cancer of the patient and uh, see in the logistic regression your target value is uh, uh, is a there is no it is not continuous it is discrete or categorical it is categorical value and in this case binary classification so we will use this formula run it and then we will evaluate performance so, so with that you will understand complete machine learning steps so today i will also talk about summing it up the seven machine learning steps and conclude for today
All right, let us uh, look at uh, the uh, questions that we have got. Uh, yeah, I think we will stay on this and uh, I've got a list of questions Vishnu forwarded and we will spend some good time going through all of them. <coughs> so, yeah. Why learning rate should be minimal value? What value is small value? How can we determine? It's a good question. Uh, why minimal, uh, why learning rate in the gradient descent should be small value? Uh, so why can't, when we are here, why can't quickly go down faster? The problem is once you are here, you might even go up again. So you might miss this uh, bottom, that's why you keep it a uh, very small learning rate. Uh, that's how you have better control, this is one. And this is again local minima. So stochastic gradient, uh, stochastic uh, where line by line each object wise we review because sometimes you can even have uh, local minima and global minima you have down up and up and down and up like this so so it is uh, never this bottom is it this or this or this uh, or this so this confusion to avoid you will do a small learning rate so thereby you have better control is axis so I will have to probably in the code uh, where we will have to look at that where can I find sklearn model selection module is it in pandas package the sklearn model selection is a package by itself so you will have to go to so so this is uh, I will show sklearn model selection you uh, asked so this is a package by itself so you will go here so the way you will import this package is import sklearn dot model selection uh, import uh, so and so from uh, sklearn dot model underscore selection so if you look at our code also you will notice that uh, where is the we have uh, train test split we have done right somewhere yeah, train test split is done here. So, have we called uh, train test split? Yeah. See, from sklearn dot modern source collection. I'm sorry. Excuse me. From sklearn dot model underscore selection, you import a train underscore test underscore split. So it is a separate package like uh, pandas. Pandas is another package. See, if you notice, these are all different packages. So this is directly you call from the value, you can ignore. So you can import pre-processing, you can impros, uh, import pandas, you can import numpy, you are importing matplotlib, you are importing regressor, you are importing, why did we do two times this day, you don't, uh, you are importing the mean square error and so on. So these are all different uh, libraries. Can you tell same example using pre-trained model? Um, pre-trained models are there in, uh, we will use that in um, deep learning. We will look at for image recognition. We will use, uh, we will call any pre-trained model, import that pre-trained model and then run it so that we don't have to write any code. It comes as good as single line. Uh, right now, uh, that way, uh, the pre-trained is to uh, recognize a face, to recognize text value. So if there is a word, so to recognize that you have pre-trained models. It's uh, more relevant in deep learning. We will talk tomorrow or day after tomorrow, we'll speak about it. Mean square error is about mean or median. It is mean only. Uh, you, will, uh, you will look at the mean value. Is a mean square error tolerable at a particular value? There is, uh, I cannot say if there is a particular value that is tolerant. You know what are the, what is your uh, value to predict and see that the number is smaller and smaller. The best is zero. You can't get zero. If since this is in four digits, five digits, I am okay with 20, 30, up to 100, I am okay uh, with that. 
Uh, can we use root mean square error? Yes, uh, RMSC also can be used. It is uh, not that we should not use. We can use root mean square error also. Perfectly fine uh, uh, for the linear regression. Is it increased to? Uh, is it possible to increase the number of iterations or only thousand is the max? And learning rate? Why have we considered inverse scaling? Uh, that's a very good question. I will first answer. You can uh, go and keep these iterations to any number. Uh, here I am keeping 2000 and I will just call n underscore writer or I can even write here itself 2000. I don't need this line so I can still execute. So see it, it executed the value. It has given me 26. So the random seed is changing there. So I can go for, in fact, in my machine can handle even 5,000 iterations and I got uh, in very, very quickly answer. first error that it is able to plot. This is the best fit curve that it is able to create. So there's not a problem. Inverse scaling, uh, I would suggest to, uh, how about you go through the SGD regressor. We tried a different, different learning rates. So this is the uh, default is inverse scaling. However, uh, you you in this uh, you have uh, uh, constant value is not changed. Yeah, this this is what we are using. Well, I, I think it's of going into the details of this. My request is you well you can try with optimal value. You can uh, keep changing or you can even uh, have some standard 0 0.005 and continue with it. That's uh, another way in which you can do it. It is not uh, necessary. Um, I use uh, sometimes uh, adaptive as a method. So there is no particular reason which one we want to have. We have more questions. Medical data, for example, cancer, like how to process and do clustering. Um, so in medical data, uh, how do we process and do clustering. Yeah, here uh, clustering, you know exactly how you can do. You can use, uh, since you already are familiar with uh, what is your target value, which is cancer, yes or no. So the question is, uh, how can we do clustering uh, in this uh, data set? You have yes or no as the uh, value, one or zero. So you cluster uh, ones and cluster zeros, but you already know the target value. So all you have to do is, find the relation between this cancer and these parameters. For that you can use a logistic regression or a decision tree or support vector machine. There are many algorithms. We will look at now uh, logistic regression today. Then we have how to find the time of execution of this code so that it can later be compared with other uh, uh, similar codes. So you will have the runtime. You can also, there is a code that you can write and get how much time it takes uh, to run this, the milliseconds, etc. You have that. Tomorrow I will share that code. If there is increasing error, then we can go for cross validation. Yeah, whoever suggested cross validation, that is perfect. So in the uh, K-fold cross validation, in uh, uh, yeah, that's a good suggestion. We, we if we use a cross validation uh, where it will split the training data set further and uh, try and um, uh, try and understand better. So once we have train and test, so we have created train data to train the machine, test data to test the machine whether it is able to predict accurately or not, and then you check using mean square error what is the error on the test data. But in the train data set, we have used three equations, right? For the train data set, we use three equations. And finally, SGD regressor or simple linear regressor, you execute it. Now, when you are executing, instead of pushing everything into it, you can uh, further uh, uh, split it into pieces and the model can check for this separately, this separately, or first three separately, next three separately and then next three separately, then you can do the average, <coughs> sorry, average, etc. That is called cross-validation method. Uh, good suggestion, we can do that. How to know that which model we should opt for training data? Yeah, see, uh, we have uh, supervised and unsupervised is the key. 
whether you know your target value in this case uh, you know this the target value is there so the moment you know the target value then you you, you have to use the supervised methods uh, i will have one more blank sheet uh, just to explain uh, this is a repetition for some people however whoever asked this question so you have this uh, uh, quadrant kind of thing you keep uh, supervised where you know the target value whether cancer is there what is the house value and uh, what are the medical charges and you have unsupervised where you don't know what is the uh, value you know, where recommendation for something uh, and now within this is your target value uh, continuous in nature or is your, your target value discrete in nature? discrete in nature if it is continuous then you use regression oriented uh, for supervision and you use uh, logistic uh, regression or um, a decision tree or support vector machine kind of algorithm so this way you can figure out which algorithm is better uh, i'm not spending on the unsupervised uh, given the time bit um, what are the final values of m and c we can check uh, the parameter values uh, um, uh, do i remember the code to quickly to get the final parameter values let me let me see depending on the time i'll have to recall uh, the final m value and c value for this yeah we can check that is it is possible to explain all models with same data set then only we can understand difference between models okay i can run an algorithm I can run one code where we will call different different models that are relevant here. Regression I can use. Addition trees are applied both for continuous as well as discrete values. So random forest classifier is very popular. XGBoost uh, is another uh, popular model which can be used here as well as here. Random forest and XGBoost. These are called ensembling models. We can use both. And then here you can use a logistic regression. Then here you can use support vector machine I already said and so on and so forth. So we can test uh, these uh, different models for a given algorithm itself. One algorithm you can have all four and then check. I will see if I have a readily available code. If I have I will share that with you. Otherwise uh, you can expect tomorrow morning I will teach. But generally I will have at least one algorithm with the multiple, uh, multiple models tested. Um, give one give unsupervised model example unsupervised uh, model example let me see i will uh, talk about it probably uh, yeah i will share briefly now instead of just uh, saying you know uh, let us say we looked at yesterday a day before yesterday netflix or um, yeah, Netflix or Amazon. So Amazon, I'm sure uh, many of us uh, might uh, buy things from Amazon. Once you go there, once you uh, go to the uh, Amazon site, you pick something for your basket, you push it into a basket, then it will give you so many options at the bottom, a big ribbon will be there. Uh, it will give you so many options saying that people who bought this also bought it. People who saw this also uh, saw these so these are called recommendation systems these are recommendations they are recommending you what you might like to see now what is that you uh, peep, uh, this target value is not predefined this way of clustering this is basically clustering right and re making recommendation and then infinite number of uh, uh, clusters can form can be formed depending on the interest it can be finite at one stage but then you can have orders etc can be changing order of the recommendations so, so this recommendation uh, recommendation systems uh, is uh, um, unsupervised then you have a uh, dimensionality reduction so we do uh, you uh, so dimensional reduction is yesterday I spoke about I worked on a data set which is healthcare where there are more than 1100 uh, variables you will also work on images where you have so many variables uh, so these variables are needed to transform and uh, bring them down to I think I brought that down to uh, oh, 110 yeah you subsequent I think even 30 down 
So now, how did I bring 1100 to 30? I used this method of principal component analysis and built it. And these 30 is not target variables. Normally we say you should have then 30 classes, right? Class 1, class 2, it is like cancer is yes, no, or something like that. 3, so on, 30 classes. So these 30 classes were not predefined, they were not available, but the machine only has clustered it in some groups uh, and then inputs from different different models and created those uh, 30 new classes all by itself. So essentially and unsupervised, we do not know what is our target value. We do not know where is this uh, any one model I see. This target value is not defined in uh, uh, unsupervised learning. So that's where uh, there are many more models uh, we use, uh, association rules are there, how you associate and there are clustering problems. Uh, if you are very keen, probably I will share a few slides about what how unsupervised happens. Hmm. Uh, unsuper what are algorithms I already answered? For medical imaging, what kind of pre-processing has to be done? So while I can answer today at a high level, how you process the medical images, but I think uh, you we wait till tomorrow for better understanding. So you have a medical image, let's say this is an X-ray of uh, something, X-ray, uh, more than that it is uh, the face of a person, this is the face. Now we need to detect any new face that is coming for authentication, we, nowadays we have on the phones uh, face detection, right? So now the face that is passing through, is it the same person or not? To do this, machine first breaks the space into face into pixels. Now, if you look at your computer, uh, you will set initially some settings. What kind of resolution I want to have? And you will choose some 700 by uh, 1020. Like that you choose. So, essentially what you are doing is, let's say 700 by 1000, you have 700 into 1000 totally, you are uh, getting, it is uh, 7 lakhs of uh, pixel values. You have 700 into, so these blocks, each block is one value and you have 7 lakhs of pixel values. Now each pixel can have a resolution of how much? The, the, the color brightness is anywhere between 0 to 255. So if you are playing in PPT also, you know that uh, if I have to choose a color, let's say 